Hello, um, uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, Ranjana and I are really excited to have just published our new book, which is called uh, New Fathers, Mental Health and Digital Communication. And that's with Palgrave Macmillan. Um, and the book really sort of brings together some findings from a small scale in-depth qualitative project um, uh, on new fathers and the struggles that they can experience um, during the process of, of having a baby and in the transition into fatherhood. Um, uh, we just thought we'd do a, a, a nice sort of quick video snapshot really of the book just to introduce some of the key ideas um, that we're dealing with. Um, so we began this work with uh, both of us sort of involved in, in other research on both fathers and mothers. Um, so Paul, myself, I'd been involved in um, researching primary care of fathers in a project with Rachel Brooks and Ranjana had, has done a number of different projects researching mother's mental health during the perinatal period, um, uh, which, which is the period basically before and after having a baby. Um, so we decided to sort of bring these interests together in this particular project where we look into father's experiences of mental health struggles during that perinatal period and we were also particularly interested in the role of um, digital communications in that process as part of fathers um, coping with the difficulties that, that they were having and so on. And so we start off the book really um, by uh, pointing to the growing amounts of existing research on father's perinatal mental health difficulties, but also to the ways in which the, the subject remains somewhat neglected um, in, in, in practice and in some sort of areas of research. Um, and also thinking about um, uh, existing research on, on people's engagement with digital technologies when they have sort of mental health challenges and, and the ways that they might connect to coping practices. And now I'm going to pass you over to Ranjana. Yeah, thank you, Paul. So we uh, kind of, um, as we progress the book, we, we develop a bit of a framework for making sense of new fathers' uh, perinatal mental health difficulties in the context also of their engagement with uh, uh, mediated communication, social media, uh, digital technologies. And one of the things we talk about is what we call repertoires of illegitimacy, which looks at... Um, Sort of how the significant disruptions in the perinatal period, a period at which at different points fathers are actually invited into the process, but sort of uh, kept in a, a sort of a supporter role and kept um, sort of marginal and peripheral to numerous appointments, etc. We look at how the period is both disruptive, but also sort of fix, fixes uh, new fathers into this sort of a stoic masculine supporter role uh, from the margins. And we bring together uh, theories of masculinity and understandings of the broader experiences of the perinatal. And in that context, we engage with work within uh, communication studies on the ways in which people communicate their problems, the ways in which people engage with each other online, the ways in which people disclose uh, their difficulties, whether anonymously or not, uh, the ways in which people might uh, use mediated communication to to uh, engage with people they live with, uh, people they already know, for example. And, and we look at a whole spectrum of, of people's activities online and the ways in which they talk about their difficulties and the ways in which um, sometimes often the very smallest of acts of sort of mediated engagement might mean something and hold sort of agentic possibilities uh, for these new fathers struggling with their difficulties uh, in the perinatal period. And we carry this kind of framework, building on all of these bodies of literature into our findings, which we can't give away entirely now, but I'm going to hand over to Paul now to talk you through a little bit about some of the things we deal with in our findings chapters. Okay, yeah, thanks, Ranjana. I'm going to sort of split this into just a very, very sort of brief amount about each of the chapters, the, the, the sort of analysis chapters, if you like, where we're sort of analysing the, the, the um, things that the fathers talk to us about. Um, so one of the first of those chapters really sort of looks at, at just the kind of circumstances and realities of, of our participants, the nature of the struggles that they had, the kind of context that they felt had sort of um, led up to those struggles. Um, and, and in particular, that chapter sort of focuses upon father's sort of difficulties coming to terms with um, the issues that, that, that they were facing and, and um, kind of the way in which they're, they're, they felt sort of positioned into this role of supporter, which had contributed, we think, and, and we argue, um, to difficulties um, seeking help and also recognizing their difficulties as sort of legitimate difficulties, valid um, difficulties to have at that time. Uh, 
the, the next of the analysis chapters focuses, turns to their sort of digital communications really, and sort of looks at like this whole sort of spectrum of different kinds of engagement with uh, media of one kind or another, from anything some sort of from complete disconnection or sort of lurking, looking at various sites, but not sort of revealing one's presence, which actually we, we find sort of really interesting as, as kind of acts of engagement of, of particular kinds. Um, all the way through to, to kind of um, hidden or coded expression of, of sort of disclosure, uh, of, of sort of disclosing that I have sort of difficulties, but I'm sort of disclosing it in a somewhat partial hidden way and, and all the way to sort of quite heavy engagement and sort of overtly sort of talking about one's problems or overtly trying to support other people as well. Next, we sort of delve into a particular sort of aspect that I just focused upon there, which is the, the notion of sort of coded sort of expressions about mental health difficulties, coded expressions of struggle, if you like, um, online. Um, and that's, that chapter is called effective coding, which is the sort of term that we sort of use to kind of describe that. Um, and this is, this is um, sort of trying to think through really how people sort of mask but also try and reach out at the same time sometimes so sort of struggles to actually reach out which might be caused by difficulties in, in terms of the way that one's positioned difficulties about whether when one feels that one's um, feelings are, are legitimate and so on one possible solution to that we think maybe for some of the fathers was to sort of express what they were going through in kind of coded or, or sort of semi-hidden ways and then last but not, le last, not least, we have a chapter um, that examines the roles of digital communications in the kinds of relationships and interactions that fathers formed as part of their kind of coping with their mental health difficulties. So connecting in with the other chapters really, but focusing particularly on both kind of longer term connections and how sort of digital technologies might have played a role in, in talking about mental health difficulties in those, but also the forming of new relationships, new interactions online that, that, that many of the fathers engaged in. And uh, so now I'm just gonna uh, quickly transfer you again across to Ranjana um, to talk a little bit about the conclusions and sort of further work. So um, the book concludes kind of by taking these findings and looking at them in the broader context of policy and practice. And we look at a few examples of good practice from um, uh, the UK, but also beyond. Um, and that's quite useful to us because as the book came out, we find ourselves involved in a very exciting new project, uh, which is a partnership uh, funded by the Economic and Social Research Council in the UK and uh, the Institute of Health Visiting and the National Childbirth Trust, where Paul and I are looking at um, working with our partners in the NCT and IHV to carry some of the findings from this work and also broader work on mothers that, that I had been involved with previously um, to design uh, uh, training and interventions and, and, and usable, useful things uh, for practitioners and also uh, for members of the public in the areas of new parents. Um, and that work is ongoing and we uh, hope exciting things are going to come out of it over the course of 2021. Uh, but if you're interested in any of this, do please reach out to either Paul or me or both and we'll be uh, very happy to talk about it and our website is uh, sariperinatal.net which has more information about this book but also our broader publications uh, and of course this impact project uh, that I've just talked about. <laughs>